Well, good morning, folks. Hope you're all doing well. If you would be so kind as to let me know you can hear me okay, you can send a tweet to me, and I will know for certain that we're good. Just give me a five by five, and that means you hear me fine. Folks, thank you, thank you. All right, first of all, I want to apologize. Yesterday, uh, my my wife sprung something on me last minute that uh, I wasn't aware of. Usually, she's pretty uh, pretty good about letting me know what my schedule has to work around for family matter stuff, and wasn't able to do the uh, the Twitter space yesterday. So, is what it is. Uh, today is Sunday, so I do things, you know. In my own personal faith, I don't go to a church per se, um, but I do um, spend time with the Lord every day. But I want to be spending time with Him the majority of today. So today won't be one of those long duration. Just keeps on going, going, going. Um, and some of you might not be happy about that, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It'll be it'll be concise and, and useful information, and it's going to be something of a number of questions I want you to go into this new week with and reflect on how you're usually looking at the marketplace, how you're looking at a market, how you're looking at price. Maybe you're using tools that are not mine and you're just here because you like to listen to you know, the rhetoric. Um, some of the questions I'm going to ask you in this space, don't just think about them and then put it off. Write them down. Because they're going to be impactful when you get to next weekend and you reflect on it. And you'll see things, obviously, a little bit differently. Um, that's, the, that's the goal. If you're actively engaging with what I'm going to suggest to you, uh, you will see things differently. And it may be an epiphany for some of you where you get your aha moment. But since I started the 24 or 2024 mentorship on YouTube, I had a lot of feedback and it's been predominantly very positive. In fact, like most everyone's saying the same thing. This is the best one. You know, if I should have been teaching it this way from the beginning. And I understand that, but I also remind you that these are the things that I didn't want to teach. You know, it's not everything that I don't want to teach. It's just it's in the area of what I did not want to teach. And it's not necessary because you can see I have students that have made money. They're consistently profitable. And they get payouts and you know, they, live, they live stream. They share their executions and whatnot. So they didn't need to have what was in 2024's mentorship, right? So I want to ask you a question about what you've seen so far. Uh, obviously, when I live stream, I'm telling you what price should do. And I'm doing it over a one minute chart and many times over a 15 second chart, which affords me next to no time to have any other expectation on what I think price is going to do. And because I'm, I'm streaming it with the lowest latency, that means when I'm, when I'm saying something and I'm checking my audio, it's usually a four second delay. So there's no way that that could be faked. There's no way that that could be uh, another source of information I'm drawing from and then picking the right one and then saying, here's, here's what I did right today. Okay, so I, I've basically canceled all those arguments so far, and I've shown you executions based on the logic that I'm, I'm teaching. And this week, we're going to be doing some work with limit orders, and I'm going to show you how to go in and take lots of executions. As a reminder, going into it, and I will have this actually typed out in a watermark, uh, because I know some trolls want to use these types of opportunities to, to make it look like I don't know what I'm doing. I, I think I'm pretty much... Communicating, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I have trolled in the past. I've done some silly things to get people talking, and it works. That's why I do these things. I'll say something to get people inflamed, or I'll, I'll make a, a snide remark about something, and it gets people talking. That is my marketing mechanism. That's how I do it. I don't have to pay for marketing. I get people twisted up in their panties, and then they go run around, and they try to get their friends to, to come over to me and troll. And then their, their followers see it. And then they get intrigued by what it is I'm doing. And then all of a sudden now they're a student. So I am the master 
of harvesting other people and I don't have to pay for it. I'm, I'm a master of manipulating the perceptions of people to get them to come and look and see and they can test it themselves. And anyone that puts their head down to the charts and listens to the things I'm teaching as I'm going to talk about today. It's a real hard argument to walk away from and think that you got it in the bag where you you're right and what I'm teaching is wrong or a fallacy because it's not what I'm actually showcasing and teaching is the market itself. I'm showing you entries to the tick around the very specific PD rates I'm teaching that are supposedly non-existent or supposedly rebranded from somewhere else, but you can't find it anywhere else. At some point, you know, the folks that keep saying nonsense about what it is you're learning, or maybe that you have already learned and you're not bothered by it and you want to move on. I talk this way, not because of insecurity, because there's always an increasing number of new people following me. And I only have a small little window to capture their attention and make them think about things critically because the TikTok mentality is very pervasive right now on social media. So if you don't convince me in 30 seconds, then I'm moving on. Not that I need anybody. Like I don't need anybody to come to my YouTube channel. I don't care if you ever buy my books. I don't care. I don't care if you like me. I mean, I really don't. That's not, that's not what this is about. I made an arrangement and a deal <laughs> and I'm living up to it the best I can. So if you choose not to use me as a mentor, that's fine. There's other things out there that you can use as a, as a reason to get into a trade. That does not mean that's the reason why the market went up. And that's why you have to embrace these ideas of, well, the markets are random, so that's why we have to use money management. Okay. I don't like 50-50 odds. I don't like it when it's iffy. I like to know when everything is in my favor. And for most people, that sounds like that's an impossibility, but I'm showcasing it. In live stream, I'm showing you where something might look like a setup that someone that watches my YouTube video one time or they watch a sampling of them. And maybe you've done this yourself where you, you just want to go in and just cherry pick certain things. And if it's a real long video, I don't want to watch that one. I want to go to the real short ones or I'll go to another channel that's taking pieces of what I say. And you're not getting the full panoramic immersion of understanding what it is I'm talking about. And it's fun seeing everybody with their YouTube channels and they're putting little clips together and they put music behind it. And it sounds like Alan Watts talking to you, right? <laughs> I'm a fan of Alan Watts, by the way. But the, the point is missed in that. It's wonderful engagement, traffic uh, inducing things that other people are helping my channel with. But you're really not learning that way. It might cause a concern or a question to arise. I want to know a little bit more about that uh, new day opening gap or that opening range gap, or what's these inversion fair value gaps and whatnot. So it, it causes a, a matter of inquiry, some curiosity. They may not come to my channel or maybe even listen to these spaces with the express purposes of wanting to become a student of mine because they've heard things about me and whatnot. And that might change because of what they see and what they hear. And what they've been struggling to try to become, which is consistently profitable, that may not have been afforded to them based on what it is they've been trying to employ as a methodology or learning from someone else or using some archaic you know, retail logic that is absolutely flawed. And I'm going to talk about how all of those retail concepts are flawed today and how you can adopt the mindset to cannibalize all of that, because that's exactly what I do. I do not trade with any retail logic except for noticing it in the chart and then fading it. That's what that's the mindset of smart money. Smart money does not look at a wedge pattern or a bull flag pattern or a broadening top pattern or a cup and handle pattern and says, wow, you know, this is it. This is where I'm going to get in here and trade. I look for those types of scenarios when it's diametrically opposed to where I believe that the algorithm is going to reprice to. And when I have those conditions, I'm going to trade with my largest leverage. If I don't have a retail concept there, it's not necessary. I'll just use a standard measure of leverage. It's not that big of a deal. But when I have everything in my favor, and I know I'm in an arm wrestling match or a tug of war with John Q. Public, who just read a book, or he just opened up his TD Ameritrade account, and he's never traded before, 
who's never studied price action. He just thinks he's going to try it out if they're willing to share their opinion about what they want to see in the marketplace. And there's a classic retail pattern in price that they're mentioning. And I know that the market's most likely going to go the other direction. I'm literally going to enter right where they're trying to go the other direction. In. And I'll have next to zero drawdown. And all you have to do is look at my executions and you'll see that when I'm entering, it's immediate delivery to covering the costs of a spread or commissions and it's already in profit. Because if I'm short, I teach my students the same way. You want to be selling short when the market's going up. Because that's the fastest route away from your entry, because to go lower, I'm expecting it to reach to some kind of premium array. OK, that's something that's algorithmically delivered for a last chance to get in, basically, is what that is. And when you're bearish, every PD array that's a premium, while that market is in a sell program, that means it's getting ready to deliver sell side to sell side liquidity. That's the paradigm. That's the, that's the methodology of watching and, and viewing price action correctly, not with pseudo order flow on level two data. That's all scam. That's all fake. Sure, there's some real orders in that, but they're not all real. And because if they can be manipulated, they can. that's a wonderful tool, like a red herring. Dangle a whole bunch of numbers at a particular price. And all of you guys that sit out there and gals that sit out there and you watch these things, these depth of markets, you know, level two data, volume profile, BSA and all that stuff. You get tricked all the time. And I'm sitting on the sidelines in the quiet, not saying anything in, in, your, in your live streams or whatnot. And I'm watching the people that see those numbers and they, and they get real excited. And the more people talk about a very specific level because look at all those numbers there's a so-and-so number of contracts there's a so-and-so number of orders sitting at this level as soon as someone says that audibly as a youtube uh, live streamer or their chat box starts talking or calling out very specific levels because there's a certain number of orders supposedly above it or below it as soon as i see that i am ready to pounce because what that is that's an indication that the weakest minded trader, the weakest equipped speculator, the most likely to lose individual in the marketplace is sharing their unlearned opinion at a real time moment where I can measure that against what I see in price. So that's the only absolute only reason why I watch majority of my live stream people that I like. Now Tanya trades is my student. So she trades with my concepts. I don't I don't fade her. I don't fade her chat. I just like watching her. So I might go into her live stream and say, hey, how you doing? Or just watch this level or that level. But I'm not trying to engage or manipulate that chat. I'm watching her for the sake of watching her because she's done well. Everybody else I'm using for their chat window <laughs> that's that's why i'm there and sometimes the, the the streamer might say something that's silly and it makes me laugh but um other than that i don't want to follow anybody else because it's just chaff but when i'm looking for a setup i will absolutely go into the live streams and get a feel for sentiment because it gives me a real world real time sentiment reading from less informed individuals and that might sound it, it might sound uh, mean spirited. It's not. It's not. You know, if 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 someone at a company was saying, "Hey, look, we're getting ready to reduce, uh, introduce a really amazing new product line of something new and innovating," and you were a friend of that person, and that that company was traded on the stock exchange, you know, you have basically an inside tip. Now you can frown on that and call it whatever you want to call it, okay, but. If I had a long term friend like that and they were saying, hey, look, this is ready to come out. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but we're going to have something amazing hit the market. I'm probably going to go in there and buy some call options. Because I have a. A perspective that's being afforded to me that I have faith in probably being correct because they're there. Well, if you look at the retail mindset, 90 percent of them are wrong. 
So if they're doing you a favor by collectively coming out and saying, this is what they believe, the market's going to go up or go up to this level or go down or go down to this level. They're giving you a gift because they're giving you better than an overbought, oversold indicator because you can't personify the aspects of fear, greed, FOMO in just the number crunching of a overbought, oversold indicator. But if you could combine that with market sentiment, when you're bearish and that overbought, oversold reading is overbought and it maybe is having a bearish divergence. But at the same time, now you have real people chattering or posting on their social media accounts. Get ready for the, the, you know, the move. It's getting ready to happen. It's going to go up. And the more adjectives that they use, that means they're really trying to convince other people and convince themselves. So that means like that's the most overbought of overbought readings as you can have. And it's not necessary to have it on a plotted basis, crunching a, a period of candlesticks or bars over the last number of 10 or 15, 20 handles or not handles, uh, uh, periods that you're going to use to measure for the overbought or result indicator. So I, I used to, as a young trader, I used to use the overbought or result. And then I discovered that it's not necessary. Just looking at the range and then understanding what the PDA rates are inside that most recent range from the recent high down to the recent low. And you can trade just inside that range and never trade outside of it and make all the money you'd ever want. And if you write down the things I'm going to suggest to you today, I promise you they're going to serve you well. You'll have a better understanding about how the markets are booked from the market maker's perspective, not a dealer, because I'm going to talk about that, because I'm going to make a very strong contrast between what you think a market maker is and what the market maker is for real. And why I'm always on side. How many times have you seen me do something wrong? Since I started doing the 2024 mentorship, how many times have you seen it done wrong? Zero. I can tell you what fair value gap is real, which one's not. I can tell you how something's going to fail, what direction it's going to go, what liquidity it's going to reach for. That to me is boring. Okay, but that's a skill set that you all are striving to learn. And I'm proving it with no confusion. It's right to the point. It's in life. I'm pointing to it. I'm explaining to it why it should do this. And it happens. It's not a pre-recorded session where people in the past have said, I'm doing multiple chances and then using the ones that work to look good. If you're seeing seven weeks or so of me doing it accurately, is it a question why that uh, you don't see losing trades by me? Because I know what I'm looking for. Now, if I trade every single instance where there could potentially be a trade there and I don't filter it with my experience, and the other things that I'm teaching as protocols that tells me, yeah, this isn't probably going to be panning out for me. So while that might be noteworthy to mention while tapering in the live stream, I'm not going to execute on that one because I know enough that tells me that that's not likely to deliver. So I'm going to wait for the next PD array. It's kind of like you're, going, you're walking down the street. You know that bus is supposed to be there at 10 minutes after 10. No pun intended. But it just so happens that they got there a little bit early and the, maybe the bus driver's a little jerked out of gear and they don't sit there long enough for you to get there and get on the bus. Okay, no problem. Just sit there and wait 20 more minutes. 